Thank you. Wow, he's really talented, isn't he? I hadn't seen that. That was very, very nice. Thank you so very much. It is indeed a pleasure to be back in the great city of Cincinnati. And even more special for me and my wonderful agent, Michael Goddard, to be with you here tonight. The year I was born was one of the most important years in American history. <laughs> it was a leap year, in fact. We had the Prague Spring, protests and student uprisings about Vietnam, the assassinations of Robert F. Kennedy and Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Olympic athletes raising their fists in peaceful protest, and with Apollo 8 mission, for the first time, humans orbited the moon. And last, but certainly not least, I was born. <laughs> In St. Louis, Missouri, thank you very much, the Show Me State, at approximately 1.18 a.m. on a Monday morning, obviously knowing already that the theaters would be dark on Monday. My mom says that my head was the same size that it is now. <laughs> and she did not appreciate that. They had to use forceps, you know? Uh, she also said there was a lot of lightning and that after my head appeared, one of my arms came out fully extended with no assistance from the doctor. <laughs> This is true. I'm telling you all of this meaningless mumble jumbo to illustrate that I have always been accustomed to dramatic productions from the very start. So it is no wonder that I would end up being the artist I am today. I had no choice. Now, on paper, I should have never worked in show business. Gay, black, elegant, But because of my inherent and instinctive nature, along with a few key people throughout my life, I'm still here. Of course, none of this has been easy. In fact, the dean of my conservatory at Webster University in St. Louis, Missouri, said to me, and I quote, well, we don't know what the F we're going to do with you, but you're talented, so uh, we'll advance you in the program. <laughs> Encouraging, right? <laughs> but on the other hand, I had some of the best instructors and mentors at my alma mater that anyone could ever ask for. One teacher in particular stands out for me and still resonates for me to this day. An acting coach, her name was Susan Gregg. She's no longer with us. She said to me, if you start lying now, you'll have to keep on lying. But if you begin to discover the truth about yourself right away, your work will be better. You won't have to double act. I chose in that moment to be the best artist I could be, and ultimately, hopefully, a better human. It hasn't been easy, but it has certainly been worth it. I have received ridicule from all sides and everyone you can imagine, usually under the guise of being helpful you know, wouldn't it be better if you, couldn't you just tone it down? You probably would work more if you, you get it. Now, being a person who was already accustomed to being picked last for the team, and in some ways I still am, 
I would just shrug these things off through sheer will and a bit of naivete. But when my gay colleagues would say to me, being out is professional suicide, and they did. Side note, in one of my favorite films, Dark Victory, starring my favorite, Betty Davis, she sees the medical results on the doctor's desk, and it reads, diagnosis negative, in bold print. I saw a similar note from a potential agent at Writers and Artists that read, he's a great actor, but a little light in the loafers. Cue the music. Dum, dum, dum. Anyway, my response to my gay colleagues was, none of my straight colleagues complain about playing straight roles. Why should I complain about playing gay roles? In fact, they, are, they get lauded and applauded for playing gay roles. And we run around trying to be legitimized by saying, see, we can play straight. When the real point is, as long as the roles are well-written, well-rounded, and have the dimension of an actual human being, that's what makes you legitimate. From that point on, I made it my personal mission, not only to seek gay roles and make them better, <laughs> but to demand that there be a gay representative in every damn thing everywhere. <laughs> Just like in the real world. Which is why organizations like HRC are so vital, essential, and important to help maintain instruct and fight for equal rights for all peoples, in particular for the LGBTQ community in all cities around the world as we know it. And now, I'd like to close with a personal plea by reciting a few lyrics famously sung by my mentor, colleague and friend, the late, great Eartha Kitt. I'm just an old-fashioned girl with an old-fashioned mind. Not sophisticated, just the plain and simple kind. I want an old-fashioned house with an old-fashioned fence and an old-fashioned millionaire. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed for this acknowledgement. It means so much. It gives one courage to keep fighting the good fight and to keep going forward. I always say, whoever you are, whatever you are, become more of it. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. <laughs>